law enforcement officer, when it comes to my badge and honor, I have nothing to to hide from. Um, I never made a call that I had to go back and and and, and question my call. You know, because when I'm working in the community, when it comes to the citizens, I engage in the community, and I'm serious about. Uh, community when it comes to the citizens. And, and my job as a law enforcement officer of 17 years, I've been serving and protecting. I, and I've never been in a position to where I had to second guess my call. Um, my thing is this, if if you, I have a, I had a calling for this when my, my dad was a Vietnam vet. Um, I, I, I was supposed to go to school for law school, but this was my true calling. This is my career path. And my badge stands for what I supposed to do as a as a law enforcement officer, that's to serve and protect the citizens. Um, so I never had an issue where I had to second guess myself when when it came to kind of came to making decisions based on my performance of law enforcement. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I, I've been in law enforcement for 32 years uh, and, and I can't tell you I've done everything absolutely right for 32 years. Uh, but I, I, I will tell you that uh, being in law enforcement also have a human side. And the human side of uh, anything that we do, you have, and, and that you know that was wrong or you're able to help somebody, um, you have to reach out and, and correct the wrong. Uh, I don't know of a, a certain entity uh, of that, but I can tell you, uh, for instance, constables. I've been a constable for the last uh, two terms. We do evictions. We do uh, process serve. We we go out arrest dads and moms and that kind of stuff. Now now, if there is a young child involved, I is some in entities where I have went double back to make sure that that child and that that kid was okay. Also, when we do evictions, everybody know about evictions. As a constable, um, I have uh, done evictions and I've also done evictions where I've, I've teamed up with other constables and say, hey. Let's pay this person's uh, let's pay this person's rent because uh, their kids involved. We cannot afford for them to be out on the streets and we and buy grocery and and that kind of stuff. So as a constable as, and as a law enforcement, I have reached out to uh, our community to do that when I can, as well as other constables helping me. Um, I I don't consider that a muncho thing to do, but I do consider it the human thing to do, especially helping someone out. As a law enforcement officer, uh, my experience is once I made a, a wrong decision, uh, I was on Martin Luther King uh, near Maple Street. Uh, when I was running radar, I clocked an ind individual uh, what appeared to be speeding. Uh, I made the traffic stop, I approached the vehicle, I introduced myself, and I gave the reason for stop. Uh, once I gave the reason for stop, uh, the individual stated that uh, she was not speeding. Uh, I wrote the citation, presented the uh, female with the citation, went back to my car. As the individual was driving off, I realized that I had my radar in the fixed position and not the moving position. Uh, at that instance, I uh, proceeded behind the individual that I cited. Uh, I blue lighted her once more. I approached the vehicle. Uh, and I told her uh, that I was wrong. Uh, I apologize uh, for making that mistake. I realized my mistake. And I actually uh, took the ticket back and voided the ticket out and apologized. And we moved on uh, since then. There's really no one incident that I can recall that was a wrong call. But as in general, I can tell you that uh, drug addiction does not care who you are. It does not care what color you are. Or your financial status. My own daughter succumbed to this drug addiction years ago. And as a parent, I looked at it totally different than my previous experience. I was a narcotics investigator for probably 15 years. And once it hits you personally in your family, you look at it from a whole different story. Because I'm going to be honest with you, if you're looking for help and you don't have the financial funds, you're pretty much out of luck when it comes to uh, help for a drug addicted person. I look at I look at it totally different is what I'm trying to say now from a from a father as I did from a police officer standpoint. Well, I think it goes back to supervising police officers. Um, when I was a police of uh, police supervisor uh, doing at JPD, 
there were certain officers that were having issues that hindsight would I would have addressed differently as it relates to marital problems and things of that nature. But being a young supervisor, uh, when, when I became a supervisor at JPD, um, they took us to a week-long class, supervisory class. Unfortunately, I did not have a senior officer to work, direct, a senior supervisor to work directly with me uh, on many occasions. So there were different personnel issues that, and I won't go just explicitly, that I ran into hindsight as my career evolved and I began to deal more with the officers, I, I determined that I could have handled it differently. And so what did I do to correct that? I went to other senior supervisors. I shared with them my experience and how I felt that I could have handled it differently. Uh, I find that when you do not know something, even as a supervisor, you must be willing to seek out the information and seek out the correct procedure. So how did I resolve it? I corrected my actions. I started looking at it from the totality of the situation. Oftentimes, we were, even as supervisors, we would become upset. We may split decisions, which may not always be the right decision. But I, I thank God for my ability to go back and readdress those with the specific officer. Okay. Question number four. How would you foster better interdepartmental relationships between the sheriff's department, the police departments, and even the Capitol Police? You know, that's a good question. It's very important. Having uh, worked in the FBI Law Enforcement Coordination Unit, I dealt with a lot of entities, and I found that in order for Hines County Sheriff to be uh, Department to be successful, our surrounding uh, law enforcement agencies, they must too be successful. We all have to work together. I'm good at fostering uh, relationships. I have the ability, God bless me, with the ability to work outside the box. I, it's not like I just have to work with one agency. I can work with all of them. I realize that each one of these agencies brings something different to the table, just like individuals. Um, how would I foster? I would probably uh, set up additional meetings with them, especially upon taking office, let them know what my issues are, what my platform is, and see whether or not we can combine our resources, uh, combine intelligence. Intelligence is very important. If something is happening, happening within the city of Jackson or Hines County, I want to make my law enforcement partners knowledgeable of that. They too may have something going on. It may be some kind of trend going on in the area, but if you do not communicate, you would not know that. Well, um, I quickly learned uh, in my field of law enforcement that everyone doesn't need to be arrested. And uh, from that, uh, there were other measures in which to go to go by in order to um, not arrest on site. So that's what I did learn. And I learned a little leniency on a lot of people, you know, to give them, you know, give them grace, uh, actually. Well, I, I think dealing with personnel, and this comes with experience. You've got to be able to go in. You can't treat everybody the same. Now, here's an old adage. If whatever you do for one, you have to do for the other. But you got to take into consideration that every employee is different. Every situation is different. What you have to do in those circumstances, you've got to work in the rules and regulations. That's a guidebook. But what you got to do in working inside the guidebook, make sure that what you do is legal, moral, and ethical. And then work with the employee. Now, the county does not have an employee assistance program. That's something I want to put in place. The county is not under civil service. That's something I want to put in place. But you got to be able to work within the rules and regulations, within the law, to 
try to get situation taken care of for each and every individual. Now, the mistake I made was I did not learn that when I was first uh, became a supervisor in the Jackson Police Department. But I had an opportunity to take a look at and be mentored by senior supervisors. And it got me straightened out about how to deal with people. And, and I really needed that. And that's what takes time. And that's what I bring to the table. I got a lot of years of dealing with human resources. And I've gotten good at it. Well, one, this is, this is not an ego thing. You know, that's what you got to understand. Uh, JPD wears an all-black uniform. Uh, Hines County Sheriff Department has changed to an all-brown uniform. Clinton Run wears an all-navy. And Byron wears a multitude of, of colors, navy being their primary. Then you have the five towns that make up uh, the county, you gotta make sure that you ensure uh, and foster better relationships in your communication. You're not leaving anybody out because you're the sheriff and I've experienced as, as being a chief to where I didn't have a, a relationship with the current sheriff and you don't belittle anybody. You make sure that you include everyone and in doing that, uh, you bring everybody to the table and you map, map out decisions that are best for each individual in their respective areas. Well, after 30 years, um, you know, I, I'd always, I always tried to use good judgment on every, on every case I've ever made. The only, the only, you know, sometimes the only regrets I may have had is if maybe, you know, one of my, one of my biggest fears ever was putting an innocent person in jail. And, and knock on wood, that never happened. And I'll compare my arrest record with any officer in the United States. Uh, you know, whether maybe I put a person in, in, in jail that could have been uh, served better by, by giving them another opportunity. But that, didn't happen, that didn't happen much, like I said. So, I mean, honestly, I, I don't mean to sound arrogant about this. Is I always try to make good, sound judgments. If I, if I, if I, if I ever had any doubt, I always thought seriously about it. But I, I was... Uh, uh, the whole time I was with the Jackson Police Department, uh, I mainly worked the predominantly black areas. I never got the first complaint on me from the community. In fact, I was well respected by them. Uh, and the same goes uh, with the Hines County Sheriff's Department. Uh, so I always tried to, like I say, use good judgment. So just right off my head, uh, I can't think of any incidents where I, I really made a bad call, made a bad decision. Uh, and that came a lot within uh, my, my training I received uh, when I started. The uh, officers I worked with uh, had the opportunity to train me and, and give me the experience I have today. Well, in some cases, you can admit where you uh, came uh, short from making a good decision. But some cases in law enforcement, you have to make a decision. It may be wrong at the time until you find out what is the uh the uh, avenue on which way you need to go. And you can always rectify it and make it a good decision if it's not concerning life decision. Okay. All officers, and I'm one of them, are not perfect. I make a mistake. I'm steadily making mistakes. The mistakes you make, you learn from the mistakes. Mistakes make you stronger. I made a few mistakes. I justify them by correcting them and made me more stronger and made me most likely not to make that same mistake. Well, there, there was some years ago where I, I made a wrong decision on a call and I was able to rectify myself from the decision that I made. Uh, the decision that I made was a use of force decision. I accepted the role that I played in it and I rectified myself and I was able to come back and I was able to continue to provide services to the citizens of Hines County as well. One of the wrong calls I made was in, uh, I can remember distinctly, April 3rd, 1993. I was the first one to go through the door serving a search warrant uh, for crack cocaine. Ended up taking a shot in the chest at point blank range. And thinking about that again, I've been the second person to go through the door. But that being said, um, I thank God that I lived, first and foremost, I sit here some 30 years later, still committed to fighting this fight on the battlefield.